Hello YouTube, this is Frugal, and here we are with a brief overview of PFPX. A number of people have asked for me to do this, so I will show you the quick and dirty methods that I use to plan a flight with PFPX. It's not as complex as it seems. Now bear in mind I'm not a dispatcher. I've never had any training as a dispatcher. I don't really know what I'm doing to be honest with PFPX in some areas. So if I get stuff wrong, just bear that in mind. I'm just a guy that makes videos. Just showing you a quick and dirty method. When you start PFPX up, this is what you see. What you've got on the left here is scheduled flights. Now, if you're with a VA and you want to regularly run a, a route, then you can create scheduled flights in here very easily. We're not going to do that. We're going to create a one-off flight. But the first thing you need to do before anything else is actually go up here to the aircraft manager. Go into the aircraft database. This is where you register the aircraft that you want to regularly fly. So I've got a 727-200 in there for X-Plane and the uh, PMDG 737-800 NGX in there. We're going to do a flight with the NGX today. Very, very simple flight. Uh, in fact, what I'm actually going to do, I actually pre-recorded this and I'm doing it again. But let me just fire up. I'm a member of British Airways Virtual. So let's go ahead and log on to British Airways Virtual. And uh, here we are. So let's go to the flight schedules. I did previously book a flight. We might as well rerun that flight. So if I go to the briefing room here. Okay, this is the flight that I've currently got booked, BA-2712, which is from EGKK to Lima Echo Mike Golf down in Spain on the Costa del Sol. So that's the route that we're going to take, and there's some useful information here that I can use, but we don't need that to plan a flight. I'm just going to do it correctly. So, back in PFPX, I'm going to click on Flight. First thing you want to do is select your flight uh, company. So I'm flying British Airways Virtual, so we're going to find British Airways in here somewhere. There's a lot of, lot of airlines listed there. Now, the flight number is 2712. There we are. And the commercial flight number, well, we'll key that in, in a second. But we're going from EGKK. Now, you can drop this down and click on Find if you wish. I already know what the code is, so EGKK. To Lima Echo Mike Golf. Now, based on the current weather... It's telling me I'm going to be taking off from runway 8 right. I'm going to be landing on runway 11. In fact, I actually got that wrong. Lima, there we go. Lima Echo Mike Golf. There we go. Landing on runway 31. The map was showing me I was flying halfway around the world, which is completely wrong. Runway 31 down there actually shows you on the map Lima Echo Mike Golf 31. And up here, EGKK 08 right. So we're all good there. Let's put in the actual flight number that the passengers will be familiar with, which is BA2712. This is obviously an international flight. Now I can schedule the time here if I wish to. I'm going to leave the time as it currently is. 2010 is about 30 minutes away from now. The aircraft we're going to be using, this is where your aircraft database comes in. I'm going to pick up GDOCX, which is my Boeing 737-300. Notice it changes all this stuff automatically and it populates all these figures from the aircraft database. There's not, it's not too hard to enter an aircraft in the aircraft database. I'll show you that in a little while. Next up, payload. You can randomize this stuff if you want to. You can pick up a random payload by clicking the button up here. By the way, there's a tooltip up here all the time, which always tells you the next thing you need to do. So I could click on random payload, like so. I'm actually not going to do that, so I need to clear all this stuff out. We're not going to do randoms. What we are going to do is enter the zero fuel weight. If you know the zero fuel weight, either from your virtual airline or from tracking a flight online, you can enter that, so 50599. 50599 that works just as well fuel you're using fuel policies here now the fuel policies tend to be determined by the region you're flying in and the airline you're flying for british airways uses something called eu ops i will show you fuel policies in a little while but basically eu ops is what we're working on great um release fuel i'm going to take the minimum fuel i need to perform this trip that minimum fuel is also going to take into account my my alternates that I'm going to be setting up, or one alternate I'm going to be setting up, and the route I'm going to be flying, and so on and so on. If I want to, I can enter in extra time here. So let's say that I'm going to account for 30 minutes of hold time. There we go, 30 minutes. I'm going to account for 30 minutes of extra time, just random extra time. So I'm accounting for that in my fuel calcs. For the route, I can key in the route myself, or I can just click on find. If you click on find, it does that. So this is the route that it has calculated for me. That's good to go. Alternately, you can go online and find stuff online. There is a browser built into this. So you can click on the browser tab here and you can fire up one of the online flight tracking sites and get a route that way if you wish, all from within PFPX. I'm gonna just leave it with that route. I don't really care, that's fine. Alternates, 
My priority for an alternate is I want to travel the minimum flight time. That's my preference for alternate airfields. And again, I can drop this down now and choose Find. And it's going to recommend at the top Lima Echo Golf Romeo as the number one preferred airport to divert to. You can see here is where we're intending to go. Here is where we can divert. Great. We'll take that. Wonderful. And now I need a route. I need a route from Lima Echo Mike Golf up to Lima Echo Golf Romeo. So again, I can click on route, click on find. It will plot the route for me. That's it. That's really all there is to it. There's not much else to do here. Um, at this point, I can click on compute flight. So it's computed the flight. It hasn't released yet. Release means good to go. We can print out the flight plans and go fly this route. Hasn't released yet. I am using a 737-800. I do have Topcat installed, so I can actually go ahead and click on takeoff now and calculate the Topcat performance. So up here, here we go. We want to take off with flaps five. Thrust configuration is going to be optimum. Air conditioning on, anti-ice off. Great, go ahead and calculate that. Okay, so now it's given me all the numbers that I need. Thraps, flaps 5, thrust is going to be derated to take off 2. Excellent. So now I can just say apply. It will put that into my operational flight plan. You can see it right here. And an assumed temperature here as well, by the way, of 45 degrees. Wonderful. I can do the landing as well. So assuming the weather conditions do not change, I want to be landing at flaps 30. Manual landing, air conditioning on, anti-ice off. Go ahead and calculate my landing parameters. And of course, Topcat will calculate my landing parameters based on my expected weight as well as the weather conditions at the time. So it's saying landing at flaps 30. If I scroll this down, I've got my VREF speeds in here. So VREF 135, V approach 143. Excellent. So let's apply. That's now tacked onto my operational flight plan as well wonderful stuff at this point i could release the flight i'm not going to i'm going to click on export if you click on export up here under root before you release the flight as long as you have these folders set up then pfpx will output the route the flight plan in whatever format you choose and it's going to name it egkk lemg01 so basically your desk your departure and a destination airports and then a number on the end of it i'm going to automatically choose airbus format in case I want to fly this route with an Airbus, um, and 737NGX. Notice it has a wind up link in here as well. When you buy PFPX, you're subscribing to their weather servers for a year. So you're getting winds aloft information from their weather servers, which are real world weather servers, real world weather. As long as you're flying with current weather in active sky and stuff like that, you're good. It will download that information and it will actually output the weather information straight into the 777's wind up link directory. So if you're flying a 777, that's wonderful. It will even output to X-Plane. So I can do uh, calculations here for the 757 I've got, the 727, both in X-Plane and output to X-Plane format if I want to, which is great. Click on Apply. It will do the exports. Everything will turn green except any that fail. Everything turned green here. We're good to go. Now, the bulk of everything you've done results in this, which is the operational flight plan. It looks really, really complex and scary. It's really not. It's really quite simple. What it's telling us here is we are departing from EGKK. We are going uh, on runway 8 right takeoff, and we are flying to uh, LEMG, expecting runway 31. Initial altitude is 190, but if we scroll down to the legs, you'll see that my final altitude is actually 390. It did that to me yesterday. I'm not sure why it did that. There's my takeoff data because I have Topcat installed and I have a module which supports the 737. There's my landing data. Very important information now for when I get into a 737. Here is my release fuel. So I need to load up 9,825 kilograms of fuel. Wonderful. I'll put that in there. My zero fuel weight is in here as well. Here it is, my planned zero fuel weight, 50599. If you want to be incredibly realistic, when you actually fly the route, if numbers change, you would note the actuals underneath here. So zero fuel weight, takeoff weight, landing weight up there. Now, the bulk of the OFP is this, which is your legs. These show you basically the, the name of each waypoint. If you are not flying with an FMC, uh, FMC equipped aircraft and you're just flying VOR to VOR, here is your VOR frequency there. So initially taking off from Gatwick following, uh, well, I'm going to follow a, a SID, which is the Sierra Alpha Mike 3 Papa SID. But after that, I want to be tuned into 113.35. Once I hit that waypoint, the next thing I can track is 114.30. And then you can track your magnetic track 206, 206, 206, 206, all the way into that waypoint. So that's how you would fly if you're not running with an FMC equipped aircraft like an Airbus or a 737. So in my case, if I were flying my 727 on X-Plane, then I would use these 
uh, bits of information here to set my radios up and make sure I'm where I'm supposed to be. Other stuff that you've got in here, weather. So these are the, the Meta reports. I advise you to look on Google and see how to read a Meta report. It's not that hard to do. This is the time. Uh, we have a wind from 060 at five knots and so on. That's visibility there and then scattered clouds, broken clouds and so on. That's Q&H 1020. Everything is wonderful. No significant change expected in Malaga either for, on our destination airport. You also have weather information over here on the map. You can just click on the wind symbol. This will show you the winds currently in effect, which is pretty cool. You can actually grab this slider here and change the altitude. So I'm going to be cruising at 390. So let's put this at 400. There we go. Let's move the slider up a couple of hours. And you can see the winds slightly changing. So it's good for weather forecasting as well, which is very, very cool. Not too shabby at all. Incidentally, when you're flying, Let's release this flight. That's now good to go. If I wanted to at this point, I can print that flight plan. Um, we'll talk about printing in a second. While you're flying, you can track your flight by clicking on the FSX button. That will show your position from FSX. You can also click on VATSIM. This is a neat feature of PFPX. It's just going to download the VATSIM data, and it will now show me everybody all over the world who is currently flying on VATSIM. So you can scroll down here and see if you see any familiar names, other YouTubers and streamers, People you know from the community, if they're flying, and you can bring up information on where they are currently, where they're flying from, where they're flying to, and so on, and so on, and so on. So let's say I want to look at, uh, let's look at Hans Bunt. There we go. Hans Bunt is flying from Echo Hotel, Echo Hotel to Amsterdam in a C-177. Cool. And you can find out all sorts of information this way. It's pretty neat. There's the route there. As I'm clicking on it, that's where this guy is right now. Let's click on Vern Cotton. Vern Cotton is right there. And he's heading very much to the south. He's heading from Florida uh, down to MHTG. Don't know where that is, but that's where he's going. So you can track people on Vatsing with this very well indeed. It's, it's pretty cool. Okay, now I, I said I would talk about printing. Let's go back to our flight plan here. In fact, results here. Release my flight once again. Uh, replace the flight plan. Okay, so printing. If you download something called Bullzip, that's B-U-L-L Zip, it is a free PDF printer. What that means is you can click on this print button and then output a PDF. Now, the reason I'm bringing that up is Bullzip has a really neat feature in that when you print a PDF, you can tell it to append to an existing PDF. So what I typically do, I don't have Bullzip on this computer, so unfortunately I can't show you, but what I would do is I would print, choose Bullzip as the printer, save a PDF with my operational flight plan. I would then run up Navigraph charts, find the charts that I'm going to be using for my SID, my STAR, the two airports, um, any NOTAMs and stuff like that. And I would print those through Bullzip as well, but tell it to append them to the operational flight plan. So I end up with a single PDF that's got everything I need. Other stuff I said I would mention, I said I would talk about showing you how to create an aircraft. It's very simple. In the aircraft manager, just to create new aircraft, you put in your registration, you choose your type, and pretty much that's all most people will want to do. If you understand everything that's being said here, then you can go and fill in the rest of these information as well. But by and large, you're typically just going to scroll down here, choose the aircraft in question. Let's say I want to set up my 777 freighter here. Let's click on that. Right, so there's my 777 freighter. I can put in the uh, registration. If I was flying this aircraft exclusively in the States, I might want to change the weight units here to pounds, the length unit to feet, you know, stuff like that. I can put in my equipment configurations. A lot of this is going to be unintelligible to most people and my extended range. Now, if I'm flying a 777, I typically run on ETOPS 120. So I could create a new ETOPS profile here. Here we go, which basically says here 180 minutes. This is ETOPS 180 now. And I could name this if I want to. There is a way of naming it here. I'll do it in a second. But I'm basically saying, if I'm flying this 777, I'm flying it under ETOPS 180 rules, which means I must never be more than 180 minutes away from an airport in case I need to divert. So that's how you create an ETOPS profile. We will cover ETOPS planning in a separate video because it's a whole subject unto itself. But if you're flying very, very long distances, you need an ETOPS plan. Fuel policies, I mentioned those. This is the EU Opt fuel policy. Pretty straightforward stuff. It looks a lot more confusing than it really is. Um, but basically you're saying here, trip fuel, uh, do we want to include or exclude one missed approach? EU Ops does not include a missed approach in terms of the fuel planning, but we do enter the extra time. I can put in here alternate fuel, how much hold time I'm going to expect. And this is how you form your fuel policies. 
thankfully again most people never need to worry about this policies are all built in so if you're flying in the us you're going to use probably us domestic if you're flying in europe you're going to be using eu ops if you're flying internationally you might go on icao uh, british airways virtual tends to use eu ops everywhere simple stuff just choose what is relevant to you so us domestic if you're in the us eu ops if you're in europe iCal for everything else that's all there is to it it's pretty easy app to use there is a lot more complexity to it obviously i have skimmed over some stuff we will be seeing a follow-up video or many of them actually because i'm going to be using this for the fully loaded flights from now on and i'm sure we'll cover um etops planning and all that good stuff later on as always my name is frugal thank you so much for watching